According to the Pew Research Center, nearly 30 percent of American households do not have access to high-speed Internet. How can this digital divide prevent a student's success in the classroom? For the next few minutes, we'll discuss. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Tranum, and I'm joined by Keith Kruger, CEO at the Consortium for School Networking. Keith, welcome to the program. Thanks, Robert. So 30 percent is a pretty high number. I would assume of individuals that do not have uh, access to broadband Internet. Is that primarily in the South? Is that low-income families? Well, Primarily? nationally, uh, that, that those statistics show that, in fact, it varies by income. And uh, families that have over $75,000 incomes have about 90% 90, 90 of those families have access. And if we go down to 30% or lower, uh, or $30,000 income, uh, almost 40 or 50% of families don't. So we have got a huge equity issue. Keith, here we are in 2014. Um, we're having a national conversation about digital rights and about privacy and social media and so forth. It appears that even kindergartens, kindergartners are going to school with some type of a PDA or a laptop. Why are we still having this conversation about a digital divide in 2014? I don't think we've been very intentional about thinking, uh, at least uh, representing the education community, about how we um, bridge that uh, issue for really poor families. And I think that's going to take a new coalition of folks, not just an education initiative, but really a digital equity uh, And Keith, is the issue that families cannot afford the hardware, meaning the laptop or the actual computer, or is it the monthly access bill, or is it that they, quite frankly, cannot get access to, to the Internet in their communities, or a combination of all three, or I some variation? I think it's some variation. Clearly, the cost of devices is dramatically dropping, and devices are less and less of the of the barrier. In fact, most kids have access to a device. Um, the interesting thing is that only at school, uh, only about 11 percent of classrooms have a one-to-one -one environment, meaning there's a device for every kid. And that's because most of the school districts are thinking they have to provide the device. Uh, but, in fact, some school districts are letting kids bring their own devices. And uh, that's a huge opportunity for changing the equation very fast. Keith, is this the next 21st century uh, a civil rights initiative, making sure that broadband Internet access is available to every person? I, I think it is. And I think, you know, it's interesting. We're almost at 50 years from when President Johnson created the Elementary and Secondary Act or convinced Congress yes. to create it. And that was really about uh, our economic progress will be impaired if, if uh, we don't have educational equity. And so, and of course, part of that is there's special funds called Title I that are focused on kids that are from poor families. But we haven't really had a conversation in our school districts about how we use that money in partnership with the folks that I represent who are in charge of technology to really provide uh, equity across. And Keith, you mentioned a conversation. Who is that conversation with? Is it with parents, teachers, students, faculty administrators, all of the above? All of the above. And I would and add to Silicon that. And maybe Silicon Valley? Uh, yeah, it's not only, yeah, the local businesses. I think we see in some communities where businesses after school are providing their Wi-Fi networks for kids to have access to do homework. Um, oh, I see. So in other words, a private partner relationship yeah. where maybe businesses open up their network, to your point, after hours. Yes. So that, interesting. And do you, ha do you have any examples as to where that's working? We do, like in Mooresville, North Carolina, where the president, uh, it's a small, rural, uh, poor community, but they've uh, kind of leapfrogged by uh, providing a device for every kid, making access available community-wide, working with businesses. And we have about 20 seconds left, and that's widely accepted in the community. In other words, people enjoy that type of a service? Yeah, and I think it's, um, it's part of a whole education reform strategy, but it's having big impact on results. Keith Kruger, thank you very much for joining us. It's always good to see you. Good to see you. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.